Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar John Ministries. I'm Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. And I welcome all of you uh, to an alternative worship service that's online. And uh, this is not to take place of regular worship, but if you can't make it, please join us. Uh, our announcements for today, you can find us on YouTube and Facebook under Vicar John. Our website is vicarjohn.com. And go to the top line of your browser, not the second line, and type that in. It should get you right there. At any time during the worship hour or service, you can play music, uh, you can play Spotify or, or YouTube or wherever you like. And some suggestions for today are gather us in, to God be the glory, now thank we all our God. Uh, three of my favorites. Uh, anyway, and also uh, you can pause at any time uh, and... and uh, uh, go to. Uh, we're we're going to pause in a moment and go to a time of prayer. Uh, I get tongue tied here a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, and we're going to do that in just a moment because prayer is so very important. Our title of, of today's sermon is very simple: John three sixteen, John three sixteen, and uh, uh, before we begin, we should probably have the ringing in the hour of worship. Let us open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you so much for gathering us here and wherever we may be that uh, come online like this and watch. Uh, we just ask that uh, you anoint us with the Holy Spirit during this time. And if there's any bad spirits around us, just cast them away, Lord. Keep them away so we can worship you and only you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our uh, verse today, uh, memory verse or whatever you want to call it, it, it comes from, guess what? John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What wonderful, wonderful words. Uh, our call to worship today uh, comes from uh, uh, Psalm 130. Let me get it here for you. And uh, out of the depths I'd cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, had kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand. Uh, but with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning, more than the watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. The words of God for the people of God. Praise the Lord. Um, now we come to our time of prayer. And as I said, uh, you can uh, just push the pause button here in a moment and we'll go to time of prayer. And uh, I want you to remember your God moments uh, where you're thinking about God all during your week. And uh, you just give him a quick thanks, 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 thanks. Uh, and uh, just mentally in your mind, that's all you have to do. So let us pray now. Oh, gracious and patient Lord, who loves us when we are not very lovable, we thank you for your forgiveness and ask for your divine help in your loving in loving our neighbors as we should uh, as we do this as we pray in your precious name of jesus christ uh, now please push the pause button and go to a moment of prayer gracious lord we we thank you so much lord and there's for all that you do, Lord, and help us to keep an eye on you at all times, Lord. Uh, we are, you know, getting involved in another war, Lord, and and it's just uh, it's just senseless, Lord. There's just there's no sense to any of this stuff, and 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 uh, help us to to get through this uh, by using a, a weapon that that uh, our government would never think of. 
the weapon of love, Lord. Help us to do this in our own personal lives as we are attacked from here and there and everywhere uh, for being a Christian, for standing up for you, Lord. Help us to withstand this with your love as we return their hate with our love or your love. We just thank you for this. Today, we'd like to hold up some people to you, Lord, and we ask you bless them in ways that are pleasing to you. We're thinking of the hurting and poor throughout the world, especially in the war-torn countries like the Ukraine, Lord. Uh, please uh, help those people. Help us to, to aid those people, Lord, and somehow. Uh, and there's other places around the world, too, that need, need your help and your intervention. Lord, we, we also ask that you uh, be with our leaders, Lord, who seem to have a deaf ear to you. <clears throat> and we ask that you help to open their hearts to you, Lord, in some way. Uh, we ask that you be with our neighborhoods, Lord, as we are uh, involved in full-fledged spring now here in the North Country. So that must mean other parts of the world are probably w uh, getting done with spring. But anyway, Lord, we thank you for the seasons and just, uh, just bless us uh, as we uh, go through spring here and bring us back next week. Lord, there's so many things that you do and we want to thank you for and individually and, and we'll do the, you, we can do that in our uh, own time when we go into our own personal prayer as we try to help each and every person listening to this today to have personal prayer time. Lord, we just thank you that you're always there and love you as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from, guess what? John 3, 1 through 17. Okay. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of the water and the spirit. Let me repeat that. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised that my saying, you, my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is, it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. Then how will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The words of God for the people of God and all God's people would say, praise be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we, th we thank you so much for all that you do, Lord, and we ask that the words of my mouth are your words and they fall upon open ears and minds and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm sure that Sharon won't disagree with me, that's my wife, uh, on this when I say that I do have a tendency to be just a little bit uh, stubborn. I do come by this fairly honestly, as I think my family is just a touch on the stubborn side. As a matter of fact, I think that Norwegians in general are a stubborn people. So I guess that, that I'm just stuck with it. 
you know i also think that there's uh this is something that changes as we age i don't think i'm nearly as bad in some areas as i used to be and i might be far worse in other areas it's hard for me to see these things myself uh, in myself <clears throat> this type of thing happens also on the cultural level i think that it is quite evident that the jews in the time of jesus were quite set in the ways of the law and many of them would never change. They would stubbornly hang on to their traditions, no matter what the evidence. Uh, of course, the evidence that came along that would change all this was Jesus Christ. He would come and change the world. But that, that, this doesn't mean that everyone was going to believe him and, or go along with him. Uh, we are looking at a very famous passage from John today. And I hope that we can see that this change this change that is coming, or that has come, or that is already in you, is all we need. It's all we need. And it's something also we all need. Uh, Jeff Strait tells the story of a preacher who wanted to demonstrate God's free gift of salvation. Uh, as he stood in the pulpit one morning, he said, uh, whoever wants this beautiful poinsettia may have it. All you have to do is to take it. Well, he waited and no one answered. Finally, a woman raised her hand and said that she would take it. Great, said the preacher, it's yours. Then the woman turned to her son and, and turned to her son and said, go get it for me. No, said the preacher, whoever gets this gift must come and get it personally. You cannot send a substitute. The woman didn't want to be embarrassed, so she did not take the plant. So they waited uh, some more for someone to come and take this beautiful poinsettia. It, it, sat, it had sat on the altar during the Christmas season, and now it was free for the taking. Someone called out, what's the catch? No catch, said the repli uh, replied the, the pastor, it's free. Still no one moved. Then someone asked, is it glued to the altar? Everyone laughed. No, it's not glued. There are no strings attached. It's free for the taking. One teenager asked, can I take it after the service? The pastor replied, you must come and get it now. It was taking so long to give away this plant that the pastor was beginning to wish that he had never even brought it up. Finally, a woman in the back marched up and took the plant. Then the preacher finally got to preach his sermon on Romans 6.23, where we find the gift of God is eternal life. This eternal life is free. Uh, this will be the only gift that you ever receive that is too good to be true, and it's free. Anyway, after the service was over, the woman who claimed the poinsettia came to where the pastor was packing up his stuff, and she gave him a crumpled piece of paper. Here, she said, this flower is too pretty to just take home for free. I couldn't do this with a clear conscience. He looked down in his hand, and he found a wadded up $10 bill. One of the problems we have with becoming a Christian is that we are just unable to accept anything that's free. This is a huge problem for many. I don't think this is anything new either. <clears throat> Nicodemus also had this problem, as did most of the Jews of the time. They had this elaborate law set up where if you did this and this and this and this, then you'd be saved. It sounds like Islam or, or some of the other works-based religions of the world today. Then Jesus came along, and as, for, as the prophecies foretold the, uh, the people, he changed everything. He, and he's been changing everything since, everything for the good. Let's just take a look at Nicodemus for a moment. He was a Pharisee and a member of the ruling council, the Sanhedrin. This means that he was a very learned man in the ways of Judaism. He was a powerful man. He was a man who knew the Bible and had to investigate what Jesus was saying. After all, he knew the prophecies, and it might have seemed to him that some of these were being fulfilled in Jesus. In his own way, Nicodemus was a seeker. Where, where many of his colleagues just dismissed Jesus as another false messiah. They were set in their ways. In this country, I think we have a problem with people who, who know things from the Bible, but, but not enough, not enough. Here's what I mean. If I went around today and asked how many people were watching this today that had read the Bible in its entirety, I think we would get a smaller number than one would think from a church setting. It is a small number, 
and it is a it, it is a small number and we are the church people the christians i would guess that hardly anyone has read the bible outside of the church now, this leads me to think that most of our vocal critics don't have a clue as to what they're talking about these are the people who know just enough so that Satan can use them to lead people away from the Bible. After all, if you can't find a way to work your way to be a Christian, well, then there must be something wrong with it. And many of these thoughts come from places like our History Channel, our New Age religions, and so on. Don't be misled by these things. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot work your way to salvation. Jesus tells Nicodemus that the only way to heaven is through the process he called of being born again. Of course, Nicodemus is a smart man, but he has no idea what Jesus is talking about. Jesus then tells him that he must be born again of the Spirit and not physically. This is a part we've talked about before. The Spirit is something we have uh, th that we cannot measure with science. It's something that cannot be seen. Therefore, according to our modern philosophers and many scientists, it must not exist. As I said before, love, compassion, and, and feelings all exist, but we cannot, and, and we cannot measure them either. Everyone seems to be okay with these, but they're not okay with the Holy Spirit. One of the problems uh, we have is that we are just too uncomfortable with something that is so much more powerful than we are. We also have another problem uh, in this area because the term born again was used so much a couple of decades ago or so uh, that it now has, it, it, it had bad connotations. What happened was that everyone was, was getting on board with being born again and others were watching they saw people be born again and just act just as corrupt as they had always been. Uh, both uh, President Jimmy Carter and President George Bush uh, were born again, but this didn't keep them from being very smart or making mistakes. The outsiders thought these people who were born again were hypocrites. <laughs> well, here's a little news flash for everyone who thinks this today. We are all hypocrites who come to church and and so are those who don't jesus christ promises a new life if we are born again and that doesn't mean we will have a life where we don't sin or we are suddenly very smart we, when we are born again it means that suddenly we have a place to take our sin we are still the same person physically but spiritually we belong to Jesus. This gives us a place to take our sin. As hard as we try not to sin, and we all try hard not to sin, we still do it. And there seems to be nothing that we can do about this. People who think that we are hypocrites because we still sin and come to church are just looking for an excuse to follow their own God, who is Satan. I would like to say one other thing about being born again before we move on. This may not be a term that I use that often. Uh, we now have many other ways of saying this, and my favorite one is having a personal relationship with Jesus. I, I don't use the term born again very often because I know that there are people out there who get extremely turned off by this. Therefore, I try to use a different terms so that they too can come to know Jesus. Now, these verses are hard for us to understand. They're especially hard for a non-believer to understand. This is one of the things that God does that we struggle with, and that's just uh, with and that's just to understand. To try to help Nicodemus understand, Jesus tells him that Moses lifted a rod up with a snake on it in the deserts, so so that and in the same way Jesus will be raised up himself. The people of Moses' time who looked at the snake on the pole were saved from death. Uh, that was all around them. Uh, so too will be the people who look up to Jesus when he's raised up on the cross. Uh, they too will be saved because they believe. Now, I really doubt that this cleared anything up for Nicodemus. After all, Jesus had not yet been put on the cross, so Nicodemus would have a hard time understanding this. But it is written, this is written several years later, so the readers would not have such a following because they, we, 
know all know, know the whole story but we do have another problem in this area oftentimes we try to tell this wonderful story in the language of christianese we like to use the terms like saved by the blood born again and just the term saved these are all great terms don't get me wrong if you were raised in a church but if you've never been in a church then they have no meaning for instance what in the world are we being saved from what does the blood have to do with it that's gross or, or maybe we're like nicodemus and we say what on earth do you mean by born again i think that if we're going to win people over to jesus we should use terms like love caring hope jesus will make our lives far better and happier these are the types of things that connect with people and we and they can relate to them that's just my opinion and you do have your you do have my permission to disagree with me but remember i'm a stubborn one and once in a while I, I, and once uh, I, I, and i may just keep on using the term uh, uh relationship with jesus instead of born again there's one more thing I want to mention before we talk about John 3.16, and that is John 3.17. God did not send his son to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus didn't come to condemn homosexuals. Jesus didn't come to condemn Muslims. He didn't come to condemn divorced people or cheaters or liars or any of us. We like to grab onto these things and point at others, but this is all wrong. Jesus came to save all people, and th in this case, all means all. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus came for you, and I would like to add, for you alone. So if you find yourself in the habit of condemning these other groups, or, 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 other, or, or groups that are different from you, then remember you are wrong. Jesus is for everyone, everyone. And I praise the Lord for that. If it wasn't so, then I would be condemned. But instead of being condemned, I have been given a new life. You can have this life also if you confess your sins to Jesus and ask him to live in your life as your Lord and Savior. It is that simple. Now, we come to John 3 16 which says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him him should not perish but have everlasting life i could talk on this verse all day it's a beautiful verse it's a verse of promise it's one of the most quoted verses in the bible because it's so comforting but it's hard to understand we are like Nicodemus and that we have a hard time understanding God. This is just the way it is, and that's perfectly okay. Tim Zingale gives a wonderful example of John 3.16 as he tells a story of a young lad selling newspapers in Chicago as a blizzard is setting upon him. The boy is so cold that he doesn't even try to sell any papers anymore. He only wants to get warm. So he walks up to a policeman and asks, Mister, would you, you wouldn't happen to know a place where a poor boy could find a warm place to sleep tonight, would you? Uh, you see, I, I sleep in a box around the corner down the alley, and it's awful cold there at night. It sure would be nice to have a warm place to stay. By the way, this, this type of thing happens every day all over the world today. The policeman looked at the boy and said, You go down the street to that big white house and knock on the door. And when they answer, you just say, John 316, and they will let you in. So the boy went to the door and knocked, and they opened it, and he said, John 316. Sure enough, the lady answered, Come on in, son. She took him in and set him on a split bottom rocker in front of a huge old fireplace, and then she went off. The boy sat there for a while thinking, John 3.16, I don't understand it, but it sure makes a cold boy warm. Later, later, the lady came back and asked, are you hungry? The boy replied, well, just a little. I haven't eaten in a couple of days, so I guess I could stand a bit of food. The lady took him to the kitchen and sat him down at a table full of food. The young lad ate and ate and ate until he could eat no more. Then he thought to himself, John 3.16, boy, I sure don't understand it, but it sure makes a hungry boy full. Then the lady took him upstairs into a bathroom where there was a bathtub filled with nice wa hot water. The boy soaked and thought, I have not had a real bath my whole life. 
The only bath I've had is when they've, I've stood in front of a fire hydrant as they flushed it out. John 3.16, I sure don't understand it, but it sure makes a dirty boy clean. After the bath, the lady came and, and got him and took him into a big room with a big old feather bed. She tucked him in and covered him right up to the neck and kissed him goodnight. As he lay there for a few minutes before he went to sleep, he looked out the window and, and saw the snow falling outside and thought, John 3.16, I don't understand it, but it sure makes a tired boy feel rested. The next morning, the lady got him up and took him downstairs again to that same big table, and he ate and ate again. Then she took him back to the old split rocker in the, in the front room uh, in front of the warm fire, and she took out her big old Bible. And, and uh, she sat down in front of him, and she looked him in the eyes and asked, Do you understand John 3.16? No, the boy replied, the first time I ever heard of it was last night when the policeman told me how to use it. The lady opened her Bible and began to explain John 3.16. She explained to him about Jesus right there in front of that big old fireplace. And, and it was at this time the boy asked Jesus to come into his life as his Lord and Savior. Then he thought, John 3.16, I sure don't understand it, but it sure makes a lost boy feel safe. John 3.16, I sure don't understand it either, but it does make life worth living. Praise the Lord for that, and thank you, Jesus, for first loving us. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, for wonderful passages like John 3.16, Lord, and help us to apply it to our lives and help us to live our lives accordingly and help others. There are so many that need your help. Help us to do this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes our worship for this week. I thank you for, for, for joining in, and I hope you come back again next week. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you, and may his face shine upon you. As you go out into this wonderful world that he made just for you, spreading John 3.16. Go in God's peace. Amen.